So if you're someone who's got an HP PhotoSmart all-in-one printer, scanner, copier, or if you've got the higher-up versions with a fax machine built in, there are some menu options that are available that are built into the unit that can give you the ability to perform various diagnostics, print out special reports, and be able to change a couple of advanced options that aren't normally accessible on the menu. Now, these, of course, are not mentioned in any of the HP manuals for the products, nor are they really outlined that well online. It's usually only accessible to HP support personnel when you're on their site trying to figure out a problem. Now, off the bat, I need to mention kind of a disclaimer that there are options in these menus that can either damage your all-in-one or possibly even make it completely unusable. So you need to be careful what you're doing in these menus. If you're just going to perform diagnostics to isolate maybe a problem on it or to confirm that something doesn't work, you're probably going to be okay, but there are options that can configure things on the firmware on the unit that can potentially cause a problem. So you got to be wary about that. And of course, the second thing is, if you've got a unit that's under warranty, obviously HP will not honor the warranty if you perform any of this stuff because it will pretty much void it. So, if you have a unit that's no longer under warranty, you know, it's okay to do these anyway, but if you've got a problem, it's and you've got a unit that's under warranty, you're best probably not trying to do much of this stuff, because, again, it is possible that it will, in fact, void your warranty. So anyway, let's get on with the menus. There's four menus that I've found. There's a support menu, there's a service menu, a manufacturing menu, and an underwear menu. And that's underwear with a W-A-R-E, not the other kind, if you're wondering. So anyway, let's get into the support menu. Let's have a look at that. Now, to get access to any of these menus, the first thing you have to do is take the red eye removal and print photo buttons and press them together. And you should get something on the menu that says manufacturing commands and it'll say enter special key combo and for the support menu we hit the red eye removal once print photo and then red eye removal again and that will bring us into the support menu so let me zoom in on the screen there so we can get a better look at it and we use the directional arrow keys on the unit here if you've got a touch screen like the C8000 series you use the touch screen to navigate so anyway this gives me my firmware version right off the bat. So that's my firmware version I've got on this C6280 I've got here. If I go to the right, I can go into the information menu. Now I should mention the support menu is probably the menu that HP support will tell you to go into if you're trying to figure out a problem with your unit. It's got the various options and things in there that HP support would probably have you using. The other ones, again, are probably more meant for the HP Service Center personnel to use if you send the unit in for repair. Anyway, when we get into the information menu, there's our firmware version again. I can go over to our model number and press OK. And of course, this tells me it's a C6200 series, along with a service ID. If I want to back out of the menu, I press Cancel. I can continue going over and I can see my model serial number if I want to. The region and language that I've got it in, obviously this is United States of America in English. And I can look at the counters. I can see how much page, how many pages I've printed in total on this unit since I first had it. And that's 8,066 according to that counter. And again, there's the firmware version. I can see the last five events that's gone on with the printer the assert history, which is basically error history. All those show is information in codes, so unless you really know what the codes mean, they're not going to be that helpful to you. And again, you got other things in here about regions, and serial numbers, level of ink, things like that. And you can keep going all the way through it, and then eventually you get right back to the beginning of the menu. We'll press cancel and we'll back out to the support menu. Now if we go over, we get into the reset menu, and this is where we get into some stuff that will, of course, affect the all-in-one. And most of the time I've seen the support 
issues has to do with ink system failures on these units. You know, the person will turn it on, they'll get an ink system failure alert on the display with some kind of code on it. And usually HP will support will have them go into the support menu like this and they'll have them go into the partial or semi-full reset. And of course also we can do a country and language reset. Basically that just resets stuff on the all-in-one and can potentially clear one of those errors. Cancel out of that. And we can do our system configuration menu. And this allows us to do some configuration stuff. Some of the things in these menus are also available in the other menus, so I will save those when we get there. So, for instance, the system configuration menu is in the other one, so I will just hold off on that for now. And then we have a print test menu. And this way I can print out stuff like a nozzle test and a couple of other things. And I'll show you in a picture all the different tests that can be printed. And I get connectivity diagnostic menu. I can look at the report on the connectivity of this. Because this is Ethernet only. Some of these have Wi-Fi built in. So you can look at the diagnostics on that. And then you get a reports menu. Scan scanner diagnostics. Again, that's something in one of the other menus we'll look at later. So that's it for the support menu. So looks, let, let's look at the service menu. And we'll get into there. Print photo, print photo, and then red eye removal, and that's your service menu. This is the one that most people watching this video will probably use because it has all the diagnostics and report generation in it compared to the other menus. So I'll go, I wonder, and then here's our system configuration again. Now, this is some of the areas we have to watch for that you can have problems with because. When you get into the system configuration, ultimately you can change things, and the first one here is the serial number. I can end up changing the serial number of this printer from the one that it actually has. So we don't need to do that again. Service ID and the MAC address for the networking on it can all be changed from this menu, but again, you have the potential to render your all-in-one unusable or not be able to do much with it because of changing those. And again, we got calibration options, but that's really all that it is in the system configuration menu. Again, the resets menu, I discussed that in the support menu, so that's the same thing. Special reports, again, I'll have the photo with the printouts of all these. These are different kind of reports that you can have your unit print out. So I don't need to do that. And then here's the main one that everyone's probably looking at, the service tests. We go into the service test. The very first test we can do is a scanner module test. And the only option it gives us is to test for scan contamination. And what that does is on the scanner bed, let me zoom out here. On the scanner bed here, it'll scan for contamination, which is basically like dust or dirt, fingerprints, things like that. So if I close it up, and run the test. See, it says the glass or backing is dirty. So it means the glass here or the backing on here is dirty and it needs to be cleaned. If it was clean, it would tell me that. So, of course, I get in a getting kicked out of the menu, so I gotta go back into it. Back into the service menu, let's go back to the service test. And now we're back to the service test, and there's a scanner module test. I can go over one, and I can test the scan motor. And again, the scan motor allows me to check to see if the motor that operates the scanner head works at all. So, I can go into that and then I can specify how many times I want the scanner head to go back and forth, basically how many cycles. So for instance, I will tell it to do two cycles, and it'll start from this end and go all the way over, and then it'll go all the way back, and then that's one cycle, and then it'll do that again, and there'll be two cycles, and then the test will pass if it doesn't encounter any problem with the scan motor. 
So if your scanner head is getting stuck or having issues with the motor, this is the test you can do for that. And now it's completed the test. It's doing one more cycle, actually. And it says finished. Two cycles, so we're good on that. Now, we don't need to do any more in there. Now we get back onto the LED screen. And now we're testing the carriage. And the carriage is the basically for the print head that goes back and forth inside the printer. And I can specify how many cycles of that to do. And of course that's the scanner head going back to its normal position. So the carriage inside I can tell it to go five times. And basically this is taking the print head and it's going like this back and forth in there. You can probably hear it. And now it's completed. As that's carriage test completed, press cancel to continue. So it cycled it five times without a problem, so the carriage motor is working. I can go over and test the service station, and it'll do two cycles of that. The service station is basically kind of what you hear at the end of the print job when it's servicing the print head. Okay, that was one cycle it finished. It's doing the second cycle now. And that test completed, no problems there. Now we get into some of the other tests, like testing out the keys. So I press OK, and then it tells me which key to press. So I press the power, left arrow, up arrow, right arrow, and down arrow, the OK button, zoom in, zoom out, back button, help button, our photo menu, print photos, red eye button, reprints, starting a scan, the scan menu, the copy menu, starting the copy in the black, starting in color, setup, cancel, and it says test pass. Let's cancel the exit. Now, if I was going through that test and a button didn't work, I would have to press cancel. And if I press cancel, that counts the test as a fail, so that will indicate that that test did not pass. So that indicates there's a button problem. The next one over is the LEDs. And of course this one I can kind of zoom out for. So we're testing the LEDs. I press OK to start testing. It lights up the power LED. I press OK. It lights up our notification LED, so I know that works. I press OK. Lights up the LED on the red eye removal. I press OK. And then it lights up the LED all the way over here on the card reader slot, which is not in view. And I know it's working, so I press OK, and it passed. Now we can also test something like the display. So it'll go to white, and then we press OK to cycle through the display colors. And if it displays all of them correctly, then the test will pass. And of course we can also test the memory card reader. My suggestion is that you have an unused memory card when you decide to test that. But you can do the test there. I can do it right now. And there's some other things in here like testing sensors, uh, deactivating the door sensor. It's either for this or for that, but it hasn't seemed to do it when I wanted it to. And then of course these are other things I'll have in the photo toward the end with all the different printing tests you can do. This is a continuous printing job, but all it does is basically spit out paper. It just makes sure that the loader is working and that the duplexer is working, depending on your test you do. And then you've got black H's, color H's, it'll continue printing H's depending on the setting you've got. And then of course it's got these print head recovery modes, which again you probably hear at the end of a print job or even before one starts where it's kind of running the pump for the cartridges to get ink to the print head. Now we got some more diagnostics, and ink supplies, reports, and a couple of other things. So that's basically the service test. So that's what most people will probably want to be looking at. I go over and that's it. So that's all there is for the service menu. So let's look at the manufacturing menu. 
manufacturing. Of course, we do that. The red eye, the print photo, and print photo, and that brings us into the manufacturing menu. So we'll zoom back on our screen, and we're in our manufacturing menu. And again, we get into our reports menu again, so I can print certain reports. And there's also things in here about the firmware information, a couple of other things I can look at again. And the product usage menu, and page counters. This gives me a little more information on the counters versus what we saw in the support or service menu. And then again, I've got my total pages. I can see how many times I've done a copy thing on here. Obviously no faxes because this is not a fax capable unit and how many times I've done a scan so it kind of gives me a counter of how many things I've done on this all-in-one. And Go back and got our special test menu, scanner info menu, manufacturing menu, again boot codes, a couple of things like that. And again, some of these options you have to be careful with, because like for instance, there's an option to clear the firmware, and a couple of other things. You don't want to do that because I don't see how you're going to reload the firmware after you erase it. Now here's the thing I was probably mentioning earlier with the manufacturing menu, is right now most of all of the units that you have, that you're using right now, are set in what's called user mode, and that's the mode that you're used to. Now I can set this to manufacturing mode and manufacturing mode of course is designed to test out the, the manufacturer and what it does it, it skips things like checking the ink levels and a couple of other things but it may give you other warnings on the screen that you can't clear you can still obviously use like the photo smart stuff and whatnot but the thing is in manufacturing mode it's going to behave differently but you know some people like to use manufacturing mode other times most often you won't even need it. But it's just one of those options there. And that's really all there is for the manufacturing mode. Now the last one is the underwear mode. So let me get into the menu. So print photos, red eye, and then red eye. And now we're in underwear mode. And this pretty much isn't that much different from the other ones. Basically, the boot code menu, I can still set it to manufacturing or user mode. And copy menu, copy for memory. Basically, this underwear menu I see pretty much performs the functions available that are built in on the unit that you would normally use, like copying something or scanning or whatnot. It just seems to put it in a menu that you can use. But then again, you can read stuff like standby times and other things like that. So that's basically what that menu is. So again, these are kind of the, the four built-in, I guess you could say, secret menus on these older PhotoSmart all-in-one units. The newer ones probably have them too. I'm not sure if it's the same method to get into them or how to get into those ones, for instance. But, of course, this was manufactured in 2007, so... That's pretty much how that is, but that's how you get into some of those menus on these older HP PhotoSmart all-in-one printer, scanner, and copiers.